Paul cried out for his church. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul's heart was, was burdened and it was moved with such compassion and love towards the people of God that were able to overcome this world by their faith because they had heard a word. They had heard the word of truth. And when they heard the word of truth, they trusted and they received salvation. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, Paul said, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Praise God. Which is, verse 14, the earnest of our inheritance, the down payment, the assurance, the guarantee that you are not alone and that eternity in heaven is waiting on you. Praise God. Paul, after he heard in verse 15, or you can turn there and read with me if you want. After he heard of the faith that was in the saints, after that they had received as mere children, lost in this world, lost in pride, dead in trespasses and sins, drowning their sorrow, their, their disillusionment, their anger, their hurt, drowning it in alcohol, in drugs, in vices of every sort to try to appease the mind to get through another day after they heard the word of truth and believed. They were transformed. They were born again. They were given a new life with Christ that only God could give. Amen. And their eyes were, they were open. And they could now begin to see their brothers, their sisters, their family, and everyone in this fallen world. They could see them for who they were. As people that God desperately loves, but that don't have a clue. That have their mind blinded by the darkness in this earth. Amen. And so they began to have great compassion and pity upon every soul. Whether they knew Christ, that's easy. Or not. Which is what Craig said. We love our enemies, Lord. Even those that seem to despitefully use me and abuse me and say hurtful things about me and tear me down. We love them, Lord. Because we know they don't know you yet. So how can we blame them? These folks that Paul was praying for, he knew that they had passed from death unto life. That their eyes had been opened. And he says in verse 15, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Praise God. Once their love had become known by the demonstration of their actions to each other, Paul took note and knows they had passed from death unto life. And he knows they need prayer. He knows they need to be strengthened. He knows they need to have the renewed mind in Christ. That without their mind being renewed to the purpose of God in Christ, that they would do their very best to love God to the best of their abilities, but would stumble because it's a very dark place with many, many distractions. <clears throat> so Paul commits his life to prayer for people that they might grow in their faith in their walk with the Lord. The things that he prayed about, I think, are of supreme importance to us then. Supreme importance to us. 
as God develops and molds his body here, this church, into what he wants it to be, it's of utmost importance that the prayers are going forth from those who have had their eyes enlightened, that know what is the hope of his calling, what is his purpose. And God is not withholding from anyone. So as you come to this knowledge that God is giving us as his church, you begin to pray for his people because not everyone has faith. Not everyone is readily able to grasp and receive and move on. Some, Jesus said, the weak will always be among you. He says, bear the burden of the weak to fulfill the law of Christ Jesus. So don't ever put yourself up there on a horse that you got it. You got something because knowledge fucks up. But you move with compassion. Keep the mercy alive. Amen. He that shows mercy shall receive mercy. I yelled that out on the basketball court yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so we pray for one another. We encourage one another as your eyes are enlightened to his hope and to the knowledge of what he's called us to be in him. Paul says, I cease not to give thanks. Or what God has done in your life. For who, who could do in your life what God has done? Who could bring you to a place where you're willing on a Sunday morning after a hard, long Saturday to open up your eyeballs and say, as for me and my house, Amen. we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. We're going to get cleaned up. We're going to put some clothes on. And we're going to try to cross town over into a little sanctuary where we're going to lift up some holy hands and begin to praise the God of this Amen. universe, Amen. the Savior of my soul, Amen. the one who brings life and breath into my being. That's right. Who Thank you, Jesus. alone could do that in your life but God? That's Amen. right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't you cease to give him praise. That's right. To give him thanks for even the unction, the, the working in your life to will and to do of his good pleasure. Because he's the one prompt in your soul to wake up. Yeah, yeah, Lord, that's right. It's good to go to the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 You're cooperating with his spirit, his purpose, his plan. Amen. Why not give him thanks in that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. He says, I cease not to give thanks for you, for what God has done in you. Sometimes we think that's just too simple. Well, it's just a pattern. It's just a habit. Where did that habit come from? It came from God instilling in me what should do in my life to follow him. Follow me. Follow me. Okay, Lord, how do I follow you? Well, well, come on where we worship together because two are better than one. That's right. One could put a thousand of white, two could put ten thousand of white. Come on in here where if one falls, there's somebody here to pick them back up. Come on into my house of God where the faith of God comes alive and people ain't afraid to say to that mountain, be removed today. I don't care what mountain you came in with. You leave with that mountain, I rebuke that name of Jesus. You better get yourself on your knees and you better ask God for some faith right now to believe. That's right. Because I know not all men have faith all the time. It's time today to know that there's some people in this house that are ready to say to that mountain, be removed and cast into that seat. Amen. My God's able. Amen. And he's given me the authority and the power. And he's given you the authority and the power, if you believe it, to be able to say to that mountain, be removed. So today, God is changing lives. You walk out this door today, the same as you came in, that you didn't experience my God. And I will pray for you because you need him really, really bad. Amen. <laughs> you need him. Precious. Amen. God is a good God. So Paul, he doesn't cease to give thanks. And he just makes mention of us in his prayers all the time. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, the Father of glory, he says, the Father of glory. How many felt his glory come in the house this morning? When Jesus showed up, things changed. I didn't have my eyes open. I don't know what was going on, but I know one thing. Eternity was happening around me because I was no longer on this earth. That's why I shut my eyes a lot during worship, man. It helps me depart the planet. I am not stuck here. When I sing that song, I believe it. I know it. I don't even care if my heart stops ticking in the middle of that service because I know where I'm going. I know where my home is. Oh, my gosh, I've been so excited to get there. What a great way to do it. Great way to worship God. That's why I don't mind worshiping with all of my heart, with all of my strength, and with all of my intensity. Some days I know we drag in, especially after a hard day of basketball. 
You know, but praise God, I think today, I'll be the first to say, this old man's body don't feel bad at all. Praise God. We've been God. playing hard, and I don't have shin splints. Praise God. That's a testimony, amen? Thank you, Jesus. And I know all you young men, you know, you praise God, no injuries. And the injury you had, God's healed them. God is faithful. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You want to fix them? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We, we keep them in our prayers. Because God is a faithful God Amen. and He loves His people. He does. And He'll come to visit us anytime, any place we begin to praise His name. Amen. God inhabits praises of, praises of His people. You know, you can have church right there in the grocery store. Amen. You meet up with a brother and sister in there, start talking about the Lord. You want to sing a song and pray? You want to turn society upside down. All we got to do is start worshiping God in public. I tell you what, people are going to be like, they don't know what's happening. But you know what? I believe this with all my heart. Now, I'm not saying God's given us the faith to do this today, but this is by the Spirit. If that starts to happen, you're going to find other believers. They go to other churches. They're going to come and they're going to join in. And it might be just like a mob thing. What do they call that? What flash they mob. Crap, what, what's that called? Flash mob. A flash mob. It might be like a flash mob. We all come together, we sing a song, and we all depart. <laughs> I'm telling you what, by the Spirit, God just, I never thought of that ever. God right now is speaking that into his church. Yes. If, yeah, if, that's right. If people can go out and do their thing, their flash mob stuff somewhere else, and I didn't even know anything about it until he just quickened it in my heart. I'm just seeing it. I'm seeing what people that love God can do. Amen. When people that love God come together, they can not only praise God and rejoice, but they can begin to acknowledge Jesus that we're two or more are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst. If I begin to sing and praise my God, guess what? My God's presence will come into place. And guess what? That's how we turn our community over to Christ. That's how we change a generation. Who would have thought God could speak such a thing to us? I've never heard a preacher say that before. Church in the grocery. I've never heard the Lord say that before. It's Sam's after any game. Samples? Yeah, we'll just mob all the flash mob the samples too. On fire at me. Straight sample ladies, we take them all. We thank God for our daily bread. We thank God for our daily bread, and the next thing you know, you'll flash mob, thank God for the daily bread. Both of you are out. You know, all the samples on. The workers are like, where'd my supplies go? Oh, yeah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Anybody that has ears to hear what the Spirit's saying to the church, they know. That God is speaking to his church. There's a flash mob. Let's go. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I mean, I'm not saying we orchestrate anything by the flesh, yeah. but we know what God's saying about the Spirit. He is growing us up. He is in encouraging us and strengthening us to see how to make a difference in our world. Amen. But the last time we've read about ever something like that happened in a flash mob, praising God somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I have right. never seen it. But you know what? I think God's ready to bust something open in Toledo, Ohio. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Challenge accepted. Challenge yeah. <laughs> accepted. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Amen. And so Paul says that the Father of glory may give unto you. Do I have bigger in here to serve? No. She gets her back. She's tired though. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's prayer is very intact for his church. Always. Very significant. Because without God, we can't do anything. That's right. He's praying that God will give. You understand what he's saying there? God never withholds, but God can't pour out everything if you're not ready to receive it. Yeah. And he's praying that as people that love God, that are willing to walk in truth, that are willing to give their trust to him, that their hearts would be ready to receive. And so Paul prays that God would give a spirit of wisdom. Spirit of revelation and knowledge in Him. I don't want to go much further. I want to go where the Spirit of the Lord goes today. Amen. 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 But 
But Paul desires for his church, for Christ's church, to be able to receive what God alone can give. A spirit, read it very carefully in your Bible, a spirit of wisdom. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost. That's done. We already talked about that. A few verses up. Spirit small. It's not capital. In my King James. That's very significant because in my Bible, capital is referring to the Holy Ghost. And NIV is capital. Okay, well, again, I challenge NIV all the time because they change things. I'm not serious. You know what I'm saying? In verse 17, he would give unto you the spirit of wisdom. And so when we start to talk about the spirit of wisdom now, we're not talking about the Holy Ghost. The fact that he'll give you the earnest of your inheritance, that's been covered. He's praying now that God would give you the spirit of wisdom. The ability to do is what wisdom is, right? Mm -hmm. Ability to do. What's the spirit of the ability to do? Think. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Think about the spirit in this term, in the sense, as the atmosphere <clears throat> of, the the ability of, the, 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 the presence of mind to. You know? We have the spirit in this house to overcome. We have, you, you understand what I'm saying? The spirit of the matter. Not individual of the matter. The sense of the matter. The spirit of the matter. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he prays that we would be filled with the sense of the matter that we can do. The spirit of wisdom, because Christ has been made all wisdom to his church, that's the promise of God to us, that we would be filled with such an ability that we can do that the devil could never stick his nasty, ugly face and sow a seed in our ear that we can't. Right. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. And Amen. It, everything is possible to him that believes. Amen. Everything. He never said there was something that wouldn't be possible. The only thing I can remember that he said would not be possible, and it is not even applicable on this side, unless you really are interceding for the dead, is bringing back somebody from hell. Yeah. Jesus spoke about that. <clears throat> even if it were possible, which it's not, because there's a great gulf fixed. What's done is done. Amen. When people move on, it's too late. That's right. It's not time to be trying to pray them back. That's right. So for all those poor souls that listened to the Catholic Church for so many years, and yes, that's on tape, I, I feel sad for you because Jesus spoke to that. Amen. More than that too. Yeah. It's just not possible. That's right. Mm -hmm. Every man will stand and give an account for what he's done in his own body. Yeah. Somebody can't pray me out of it no matter how much they love me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. That puts the... The onus of responsibility right here, squarely right. on my shoulders. And today, each one of us take that responsibility seriously before God. We will give account for our lives. And we love Him with all of our hearts. And we have peace and we have assurance and we have hope. But God is faithful. And Paul knows that we, as His church, that have passed from death unto life, People that now can have mercy upon a generation begin to love the saints and see this world for what it really is, that we need to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit, the ability, the sense of I can do and revelation, which means God speaks directly to me. And this is something that he will continue to unfold to us because I know there's no time to do it today. He's going to unfold to us the significance of revelation to us. Revelation knowledge, the ability to see. Jesus said, those things that my Father does, those things that I see my Father do, those are the things that I do. And you know where that ties in? You want to know where it's all tied in? From last week. He said the greatest sin that man had was that he was living a life of bitterness. It was not like the paralytic, which I believe Craig brought out, about the man that was let down on the bed, the mattress by his friends, to see Jesus. No, this man had nobody to get him to the pool of Bethsaida. Yeah. Nobody to help him on his way. Why? Because of bitterness of his soul. The anguish of his heart. He chose to live in a place where he was turning people off. Amen. Whether he knew it or not. But that's what he was doing. And because of that, Jesus come back up to him and he says, Go and sin no more, lest a greater thing happen to you. 
It's about having our hearts right before God. Thank God we took communion last week because that was a beautiful time, wasn't it? Yeah. A beautiful place of release to know, God, I'm not holding things against people. Because if I do, I'm in danger of, even as this man, something worse coming upon me. So Jesus justified himself because they wanted to go about the young man, then goes and tells the Jews, hey, it was Jesus. Not maliciously, but he goes and says it's Jesus. And they wanted to slay him for doing it on the Sabbath. And Jesus comes back and he says, "What I see my father. Do you hear the, he goes, my, my father worketh and hitherto do I work. And now I want to kill him, not just because he healed the guy, but because now he's making himself equal with God, but I don't care because the Bible calls me a son of God. Amen. And today, in Christ, we are the sons of God, so let the world come. Amen. Amen. They wanted to kill Jesus, and I could get all the teaching I was reading about all that this morning. He says, man, he says, don't think the world's going to love you. They didn't love me, they're not going to love you. And the reason is, is because we've received the spirit of truth. We've received something the world cannot understand. And, and, and it's amazing that the, the world would just go, Rawr! with all of its pains, with all of its teeth, with all of its anger, with all of its emotion, to try to attack that which it does not understand. But if they could be the mature wisdom intellectuals that they think they are, and step back for just a moment and go, why do I react like this to people when I don't understand things? They would then see that they're in darkness. Because that's not what a rational, mature person would do. When they're in control, a rational, mature person will maintain themselves. But it's amazing when they come into the presence of God, who is greater than all, how they start to react without even thinking what it is. It's a spirit of darkness on our life. Amen. And I hope that goes out to the internet. <laughs> because I would have the world think about that. Why do you react the way you react when the Spirit of God comes around in His people that you feel you've got to persecute Him? When you're all that in your makeup, in your wisdom, in your, your ability, your maturity. You know what I'm saying? In the world. That's right, in the world. So if they could consider that, they just might see, whoa, there's something greater going on that I don't quite understand because that goes back now to John chapter 3. It says that you cannot see the kingdom of God without Amen. being born again. Amen. Once you're born again, your eyes will open up. You'll no longer be mystified while you're acting that way, you go, oh my gosh, I see now. My eyes have been opened. I have, why, does this, why is this significance? Because Paul is praying that we would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation, having eyes to see. You cannot see the kingdom of heaven until you're born again. Amen. You know what that is? It's called revelation. When God reveals something to you. When God gives you revelation, you now are marching with the master's orders. You now have the, the, the source, the life, the truth. You have the final word on something. You're not intimidated to go up to something and say, well, I think I got an idea. No, I don't. I got the truth. I got to speak in love. I got to share love, but it's the truth and I ain't coming off of it. Amen. Because my God's not a liar. That's right. That's right and his word is true. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Paul knows his church needs to be in a place to receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Have the essence of, I can walk in any situation. I can do, Lord, because you're going to reveal it. Just like Jesus said, my father works and hitherto do I work. If I go over there to show you that in John chapter 5, you know, we can read that together. But that was the end of the matter last week. We kind of left it off with where, you know, going to sin no more. Or, you know what I'm saying? About the great sin there. I'm telling you the next verse over. Read that in your homework tonight. And it'll confirm what I'm saying to you. We have to allow the Lord to be able to speak to us in the moment. Jesus continually, it didn't matter it was a Sabbath. It didn't matter that, you know, people are going to look at him and go, you should not be working. It didn't matter that they're going to look at this man, pick up his bed and go, he should not be working. It did not matter what the restrictions and limitations of the day and of the hour were. He said, my father's working. I see him doing. So shall I do. And when we come into a situation, a spirit of wisdom is, I have the ability to do. Why? Because, Father, my eyes are open. My ears are open. Speak to me. Show me right now. Give me words to say. Give me the ability to do. That's what Paul wants his Amen. church to have. There isn't nothing that can overtake us. There isn't any situation that should ever stop us. Unless it's something we're just supposed to stand. And having done all we can do, 
to stay and pray. Yeah. Know this, forces of evil ain't overtaking it. Yeah. You know, the, the gates of hell are, are not going to prevail against the church. We will be able to stand. Having done all, we will stand. Amen. 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 Praying always with all manner of supplication Amen. in the spirit. Because God has given us the ability to do. Amen. So even when it looks impossible, it doesn't matter. Hell ain't prevailing. Amen. God's church, God's ability <clears throat> in our lives. Maybe getting a little ahead of myself, but I want to speak to that if, if, if we get there. If we don't, that's fine. I'd rather say a few words that God's saying than sit here and overload us with revelation Amen. and knowledge. But Paul says we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Because now I can approach everything. I can flash mob in a store, not take a second thought about it. So it doesn't matter. I have the ability to do. Hey, you know the song? Sing this with me right now. This will comfort our souls. Next thing you know, there may be others that just sit and join and put it on the PA. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we borrow it? Open your own PA. No. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. You know, these are the things that Paul was troubled and burdened for. And, and I realize as a young church, I realize that we are his body. And he's growing us up. He's working in each one of our lives individually. Amen. At the pace that he can work with us. And it's fine. He's, he's not in a hurry. Right. He's very patient. In fact, the whole reason he's waited this long is because he's continuing to be very patient for all the precious fruit of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This all ties into the rediscovery of purpose. This all gets into fruitfulness. If I had time, I'd go over to John chapter 4, speak to you a little bit more at the woman of the well, which is really mind-blowing when it says, go and get your husband. Well, I don't have a husband. Well, you spoke right. You've had five others, and the one you have now ain't yours. Have you spoken the truth? You didn't get number? But it... If I could just whet your appetite for what God is saying. He had to do something by revelation knowledge to make something happen because at that moment when he revealed something, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. Sir, I understand you just give me something that no man knew. He reached into the spirit, into eternity, into his relationship with his father who knows everything. From his eternal relationship with his father... Who knows the beginning from the end? Yeah. He looked into this woman's life and he did something. He spoke forth with revelation knowledge. Yeah. He spoke forth right there in the moment. Why? So that it would create an eternal impact because this lady got back. She was so moved. She went back to town. You got to come out and see this man. He told me everything I ever did. And many came to see Christ. They constrained him to stay. He stayed two more days. And many, you know how the story ends. Many believed on him, not because of what the woman said he said, but because what they heard him say. They received the word of truth. When they received the word of truth, it changed their life. It became the gospel of their salvation. And now they, too, at that point, were waiting for the earnest of their inheritance, which was not yet given yet, until he was crucified. He had to move with the spirit of revelation for there to be for there to be a harvest. I'm gonna blow your mind. I mean, Lord. John chapter three it says, one sows another week reaps. God gives the increase. Let's look at what he said next, which is very, very significant. I want this quote for you. I'll just do it right. <clears throat> Where are we at? John 4, I'm sorry. Verse 30 says, they went out of the city and they came unto all the people that she went reached, right? In the meantime, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. And he said this to him. He says, I have meat to eat of that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him to eat? <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. What's he saying in verse 35? 
Say not there yet four months and then come at the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and that he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor, other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. Verse 39, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which he testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he bowed there a couple days, and many more believed because of his own word, and said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and we know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now check out what happened in the middle of all that. He talked about rediscovering purpose, rediscovering fruitfulness. He said, I'm going to tell you right now, one sows and another reaps. But you know the beauty of this thing is? He that reapeth receives wages. He receives wages and gathers fruit unto life eternal. We all may sow. I'm going to end with this word here. We may all sow. Oh, I just am a good person on the job. I have a good witness going. I don't ever cause. I don't ever swear. I try to keep my joy level up. Not let pressures take me down. I do this. I do that. We're all my family. I try not to ruffle any feathers. I do a great job being a Christian. We all sow. And you know what? Maybe. I don't say that with sarcasm. I say that as a reality. I know who we are as people. I know that's what we do. But I tell you what, the ones that are sowing, they reap in the wages. Jesus said it's the ones that reap, they gather fruit unto life eternal. Oh, great, it's good to be a part of the sowing process. And maybe for the big part of the body of Christ, they're just happy with that. They know that they're involved in God's plan. I ain't satisfied. Not after, you know, when you press in close to his heart, you start to know what he's doing. When the Father reveals to you what's happening, he says, I don't call you a servant no more. He says, I call you a friend because you do what I ask you to do. When you do what I ask you to do, I reveal everything to you that I'm doing. You're a son to me. And when I have my eyes enlightened, when I am filled with the spirit of can do, this can be done. Wisdom, faith. Because I have revelation. I have my father speaking, sharing with me. I'm used to that. I expect that. I look for that. So I'm not afraid to move. So I do move. In him I live and I move and I have my being. Mm -hmm. Now I approach the situation. I don't have any answer in myself other than a hope that's within that he puts there. Other than what he says. When I see him start to say something. When I, when I hear him and I begin to understand or, or just perceive. He, the Bible calls it show. S-H-E-W in the King James. Show, not S-H-O-W. It's a revelation. It's an impartation. When God begins to impart to me what's got to be done in the moment, I'm going to do it. That's what Jesus did. That's what we're going to do. Because it was in the moment when he was speaking with the, the, the woman from Samaria. The Samaritan woman, when he was speaking with her, that he had to go in there and he had to look into eternity and say, you know what? This is what's going on in your life. He had to have a spirit of revelation from God the Father to be able to deal with something. Why? Because there was fruit to be had. And he wasn't willing to just sit there and be thirsty at Jacob's well and not and just get him drink water. He was about his father's business. He was about wanting to reap some fruit. Yeah, I know. He says, don't say this four months. It's right now. I just spoke with this woman. Why? Because I'm going to turn a city upside down for God. Amen. That's exactly what he did. I'm going to turn this city upside down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for it by the Spirit. A little revelation knowledge about your life right now. And boom, it turned everything around. The disciples come back and they're, what's he doing talking with this woman? You know, but they didn't say that to him. They're questioning him huh? in their own heart. Why is that going on? Because Jesus started a revival in a city through a woman. It wasn't even a Jew. Amen. Come on, man. God does things in some weird ways. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gosh, the next time we want to despise somebody or think that they ain't somebody that we should talk to, let's let the Lord just humble us a little bit. Come on, who are we? Who knows who God is going to use to start a revival? That's right. If you be filled with the spirit of wisdom and, the, and, and revelation and the knowledge of Him, you're going to come into that moment and you're going to go, I don't know, you know, hey, Lord, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Give me the revelation, what to say, what to do. It don't matter what I think. Don't matter what I think. Because I'll tell you what, it'll change your life and you don't know what God can do through another person's That's life. Right. 
And I'm ready to be one that's on the receiving side of things. Yeah. I want to pray and have a relationship with God that I reap things. Amen. Because he says, I gather wages. He says, I reap fruit eternal. You know, I'm a part of the blessing here. I, that's where this church wants to be. Amen? Amen. 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 We don't want to be just a part of the sowing. Praise God for sowing. We all sow. But until you get sick and tired of just being a sower, and you start to say, God, I want an expectation on my life to be a reaper, then things aren't going to change for you. Amen. But as soon as you begin to say, God, I ain't satisfied no more. It's okay. I can live just right in front of mommy and daddy. I can be the little blessing of the little Christians as long as I don't ruffle their feathers. They're fine with me. But as soon as I start being a man or woman of God that's not afraid to call things what it is, and say, you know what, Mom? You don't need to worry about that spirit that's on you. You don't got to worry about that depression. You don't got to worry about that alcohol. Paul. You don't got to be bound up by pornography, Dad. People got problems. Come on. Amen. You don't got to be you know, bound to this thing because I got a God that I follow and serve that set me free. And now I'm not bound by it no more. And let me just share with you that it is possible. Just put a little faith and trust in Him. Amen. Oh, God, you talk to my mommy that way. That's right. You'll, you'll always be a sower. Right. But the person that gets the faith to walk with their God and have their eyes open and have the spirit, the essence of can do and revelation. They're going to know how to approach you because they're going to speak for God's words, which are spirit and life. Amen. They're going to change the matter. Yes. They're going to penetrate the heart. They're going to be just like that woman. Oh, well, my gosh. I can't believe what this, is, this was said here. Even my own son, prophets without an honor in his own country. Amen. Don't matter. Jesus still saved all the, the Jews. That's right. Okay? So let's not use this as an excuse. Just realize there's tough times of persecution. Yeah. But God can use us. I'm tired of being a person that just sows. I want to be a person that reaps. But a person that reaps has got to be able to speak forth with revelation. Amen. A person that reaps has got to have intimacy in the spirit that has God deposit things right now. Just like Jesus, I saw my father do, so I did. I didn't care about all the ramifications. I wasn't worried about the Jews who are going to break down my, my neck. You know, like almost like soldiers, you know, these, these spiritual, they're supposed to be spiritual guardians. Almost like soldiers. Oh, let's kill them because this killed somebody. Told them to pick up their mattress. How idiotic is that? But that's, you know, think about our families. They don't approach us like that, but we fear them almost like yes, that. It's yes. like, oh my gosh, I ruffled mommy's feathers here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes we need to ruffle their feathers so they don't bust hell wide open. Amen. Right. Praise God, we've Amen. got to get on fire for the Lord. Amen. It's not time to be just sowers anymore. 90% of the body of Christ can rejoice that it sows. But my Bible, Jesus just told me, he says that he that reapeth receives wages, and he gathereth fruit unto life eternal. That's what I want. That's what this church wants. That's what this body's all about. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. 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 As the leader goes, so will the people. That's right. Amen. As the priest goes, so will the people. It's amen. a biblical principle. Yes. I'll tell you, that's where I'm going. So if you don't like it, you got to run. you got to run because I ain't going to let no spirit come in here that brings vision. Amen. Man, I'm tired of just sowing. That's okay. We'll keep sowing to the glory of God. I'm going to reap. We'll run with you. I'm ready to read. That's right. It's about being filled with a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him. Not being afraid of any moment. Amen. Being able to walk in there and say what thus said God. Amen. Not because I'm holier now, self-righteous. My gosh, we all, we, we, we're good people, man. We, we come in, we, a lot of us dress like, you know, anybody else who's ever said, you know what I'm saying? We're not like, oh, oh, you know, look at this guy. No, we were like average, average Joes. The difference is what's happening. We're bringing the kingdom of God that's within Amen. to bear in this world. That's what's different. Amen. Amen. Our fellowship shouldn't just degrade to natural situations. My God is able. He can over help us overcome every situation we're in. We don't ever have to just get together and wallow in our self-pity. Amen. Period. Amen. We should always leave a situation encouraged, knowing that God is for me, not That's against right. me. Amen. That in Christ, I am able. Amen. Amen. Right. But see, this has got to permeate into the body of Christ. That's why Paul prayed. Paul says, Father, I, will, I desire, I long, I, I ask that you give it to him, Lord. Give him a spirit of revelation. Amen. Give him a spirit of wisdom. Give him the knowledge they need to come up to that next level. Amen. Jesus, I believe, showed it right there. He showed it. We can be sowers all our life. And I think we're good at it. Yeah. But I want to be a reaper. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 And I don't believe that's disrespectful to the spirit of the Lord or not. No. nothing at all. No. I'm going to leave us with this thought. It's almost new. We have five physical senses. I know someone's got to think about it a little bit. Wow, I thought about that in school. <laughs> what do we have? Touch, 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 taste, 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 smell, hearing, smell, 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 smell hearing, see. hearing, sight, seeing. Five, right? You know what's interesting? Holy Spirit's actually a sixth one. Four of those are in the head. Four of those are in the head. The other one. Is it just two fingers? No. That's right. The whole body. The whole body.
whole body is involved in that sense of feel. If one of my members becomes hurt, afflicted, all of my members pretty much don't bother. It affects my abilities. Except my hand departs. The rest of the body, depending on the hand, can't get what's got to get done done. Right? Mm -hmm. When any part of the body is hurt, know this. <coughs> the head always knows. The head can't ever get its focus off of what's hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's one of the big tricks? Yeah. The big trick is try to concentrate on something. You know, listen, you slam your hand or hurt something. You're trying to concentrate on something else because the pain is so great that all your mind is doing, you're, you're consumed with, is that member. Yes. Say a lot. Amen. Amen. We are his body. We are members in particular. Amen. And when any of us hurt, the head, Jesus, he does everything. He's got all this focus, all this concentration on it. That's why I said, we have to be, that's why the Bible talks about us so much. We need to have unity in our faith and our believing. We won't believe what we want to believe. We won't tolerate ourselves just to, to just decide, I'm going to, well, that's okay for you, but for me, I'm just going to go somewhere. That's fine. I'm not asking you to conform. I'm asking you to be transformed. By the word of God. Amen. Amen. We cannot allow somebody that's struggling and hurting to just sit in that position. We won't ostracize them. We'll pray even harder. We'll work in courage even harder. Because as long as there's a member that's suffering, that's struggling, that doesn't understand, that's not able to stick with the body, able to be a part, able to function and have its place, it's going to hurt. And the head knows it. And when Jesus shows on the scene, like he did this morning, he deals with it. He speaks to it. Yeah. And so you'll find Real left field. A lot of times things just getting dealt with. God dealing with certain things like where did that what did they have to do with anything? Well, somebody in the body needed it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So even you go, whoa, whoa, that kind of was weird. That's okay. That's God. Amen. <laughs> God has to deal with us. Amen. We are his members. We're his body. And so as Steve was even bringing out there, when God gives us the spirit of knowledge the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, when God begins to work with us in that intimacy, because going back to John 15 now about abiding in the vine, I want to go back to 14, 15, 16 later on as the Lord leads us into those areas. As we are abiding with him and he's abiding with us, the, the impartation that God gives us, this, uh, this essence of can do, I have revelation. God is speaking. It settles it. It's truth. It's 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 you know what I'm saying. It's the mo it's uh it's what I need to be able to get the job done. When God gives you instructions, are you gonna argue with the, the author of the instructions? No, I'm not gonna argue with it. You know, it's like well, let's take this back to the prayer and redo it a little bit. No, we're not gonna no. do that. Is what it is. When God gives you that, it becomes a sixth sense, if you will. It becomes a completely new sense. It's something that we absolutely need as the body of Christ. Hebrews speaks to it. It says that we that are mature no longer have need of milk. Those of us that are ready to partake of some filet mignon, <laughs> we have our senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen. That's a sixth sense in operation. It's knowing. It's the revelation that God's given me. The impartation, the ability to do. Being able to be used at a moment's notice. Not because i got to turn them on and pray, oh God, give me something. No, because I'm walking with Mrs. Son. My life is His. I pray there would be no duality in our lives this year. Amen. 2013. That's right. This is religion. If we think we can walk out of here, go back to our old ways, and then come in here and, and embrace new concepts and stuff like that, that's duality. And God's not in it. You're going to struggle. But when you become one with him, as he desires to be with his church, then you're going to be filled with all of the strength, all of the grace, all of the understanding, all of the wholeheartedness. I love it. I love when my mind is not tormented by old King James' halt between two opinions. Yeah. King James, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not stuck going, should I trust God in this area? 
because hey, I just I want to hold on to this. I know I, I if I just trust God, I could make it better. But you know, I, you know, are you kidding? To me, I'm sorry. I'm not belittling anybody. If you struggle in those areas, to me, that has become very low. Maybe to you, it's still some of a struggle. And that's fine. I'm not belittling that. That's a way to look at our lives and know whether we've grown. And, and if I always portray myself as maybe being too much in everybody's shoes, you won't have anything to hope for. But I'm telling you right now, if you struggle in that area, that's too low. Amen. God is able. My God has done great things in my life, and Amen. I know he's done great things for you. It's time Amen. to trust him with all your heart, with all your soul. Amen. It's time for you to be to not be halt or stopped up between two opinions. It's time to say, you know what? If God said it, I believe it, that settles it. If God is saying that if my heart can begin to embrace this, that he wants to enable me to be a reaper, then let me be a reaper. Why struggle? Well, I don't know if I would be a good person to disciple somebody or not. Who said that you should say that about yourself? The devil? Yeah. Your own insecurity? I tell you, my God makes me able. He gives me grace and power to do everything he's called me to do. And I'm nobody. I feel like Paul. I should. I'm. You know, if Paul said he was the least of all of them, oh my gosh, I don't even come on the same radar with Paul. Amen. I'm so low. I'm serious. I'll never boast in my own ability. All I can do is boast about my God, who has made me able. And I hope by the faith and the love that I've shown, my family's shown, my wife has shown, my friends have shown, because we walk with Jesus, that it encourages and impacts this entire community. It isn't just something for us. It's something we're trying to give away. It's what Paul was saying. Father, give it to them. Give them the ability to do this thing. Give them wisdom. Give them revelation. Let them not look at their own limitations. So that's where we're at today. Today we're not going to be stuck between two opinions. <laughs> He's looking way up here. <laughs> Today it's time to just surrender to God. If you've been struggling in multiple, you know, just let go in some areas. Let go. Amen. God will take the pain. He will take the frustration. He'll take it. Let go. It's easier to live for God than to sit there between Amen. two opinions. Amen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I dread going to church. Why do you dread going to church? Because you're living between two opinions. Right. Man, when I'm so out for God, I can't wait to get to church. Amen. And I don't mean to make this the building of the church. I'm talking about when God's presence is coming where two or more gathered. Amen. I can't wait. It has nothing to do about the, you know, what I feel. It's it's everything to do about just the life within me. What it, what's it, where am I abiding? Am I abiding in his spirit and in his presence or not? And when I am, I want to be where he is. That's, to be honest with you, be just gut honest with you, that's where basketball's been. You know what? I'm not great at all because I never really ever played. I give myself over and, Lord, here, take my body. If it doesn't drop dead on the court, you know, I'll play. <laughs> and, I, and I play on the court. But you know what I enjoy the most? Posting on people. Yeah, yeah, post it up on people. No, I enjoy the spirit of fellowship with God's people. Amen. Oh my gosh, I come away just knowing that it's been a great, wonderful time. You know, I found myself a little embarrassing. But Brother Doug came out last night and played again with us. He's such a good brother. Just a sweet brother. And he gets ready to leave and, you know, he just shakes my hand. And I just found myself out of, out of my heart just immediately. God bless you, Doug. I love you, man. Wow. Love you. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. But we're to love Amen. even our enemies. Yeah. So when God's love is a, just shed abroad in your heart and you're just giving it away, it should. It, it didn't make me feel uncomfortable. I was like, oh, I can't believe I just said that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not because it's beyond me, but because I was thinking, oh, how does this brother receive that? Like, whoa, you know, that's pretty heavy. You know, it's like I get in a relationship with a woman. And, Told her I love her too fast. Type of deal. <laughs> <laughs> I can't come out and practice next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you gotta kind of understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but what a, what, a, what a great brother! And you know the spirit that's in him, the spirit of Christ that's in him. Just you know, he just connects with us. Yeah, yeah. And he knows us. And a what a spirit. joy to fellowship with each other. And that's why I said wherever God's church is, oh, I love being with them. But Lord, make me fruitful. Lord, make me fruitful so that I can be a, a person that reaps, not just sows. Amen. And I'm ready for that. And I believe that's what God is speaking today. And he'll continue to speak. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand your feet and let's pray. Amen. He will continue to bring us to this place where, where it isn't about desiring, it's about fulfilling. We will be fruitful and multiply because we're just not willing to be a part of sowing. Well, 
the soap. No, Lord, give me that. Give me that. What do they call that thing? Give me that sickle. Give me the biggest, baddest, sharpest sickle you got. Let me go out there to get some. <laughs> Let me go get some. In the spirit. Amen. Amen. To his glory. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you today for this time together. I thank you for touching your people's hearts. I thank you, Lord, for showing up today to bless us in worship. Yes. Lord, for speaking your word to, to encourage us, Lord, in our faith, to trust you, Lord. I pray for anybody that might be struggling between two opinions, you would just set them free. Amen. Father, give them the faith to just trust you. Lord, I know that one man said, Lord, help me in my unbelief. And so, Lord, today I pray, Father, for someone, if they're in unbelief, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would give our hearts completely and wholly to you. Lord, that this wouldn't be a struggle. Lord, that we'd actually find the strength there is in the body. Amen. Lord, that we could run this race with patience. And Lord, that we could obtain the prize. Lord, we are so excited that you're speaking to us about our purpose, about our vision, who we are in you. And so I thank you today, Lord, for meeting every need. Lord, I know there's a lot of things happening in the spirit here. I know that there's people changing jobs and changing homes. Lord, that there's, there's you know sicknesses and surgeries. And there's things going on all around us. But, Lord, we give them to you. Amen. Lord, we ask, Lord, you would lead us and guide us every day. Step to the righteous man and order of God. What we ask today, Lord, is not the answer of those things. We ask that every single day you would impart unto us the ability to do and revelation and the knowledge of you. A word from heaven that gets us through, that we're not living by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. So strengthen us, Lord, your church. Strengthen us today and be Thank with you, us. Lord. In Jesus' name, the saint said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. You will be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord.